Okay, exercise 11.8, return on investment and residual income relationships. A family friend has asked for your help in analyzing the operations of three companies operating in the same service sector industry. Supply the missing data in the following table. And that's really all we have to do is look at the missing data. Now, what I've done down here, and this may help you in... Uh, if you ever face a question like this on an exam, return on investment, as we've learned, equals operating income over average operating assets. Well, since we can use algebra, we can express operating income. We can isolate operating income and say that operating income equals return on investment times operating assets. Or we can say that average operating assets equal operating income over ROI. So you can rearrange this question here to equal to, to isolate whatever term you're looking for. So as we go down column A, we have sales, we have operating assets, but we don't have operating income. That's missing. Well, over here, we have operating income equals ROI times average operating assets. We have average operating assets, and look at this, we have ROI. So we can solve right away for this, uh, for this particular problem by just multiplying the two factors together. So in the cell, you would, of course, put your equal sign to denote that you're uh, entering a formula. I click on this one, and you would multiply by ROI. There you go, operating income is 32,000. So let's move down the list. What else are we missing? Uh, return, required rate of return, uh, uh, we have our percentage. We don't have our dollar amount and we don't have residual value. Well, if our minimum required rate of return is 15%, that's a minimum required rate of return on our average operating assets, which is 160,000. So we know it's 15% multiplied by our average operating assets is 24,000. And of course, residual income is our operating income minus the dollar value of our required rate of return, of our minimum required rate of return. So we know it's 32,000 minus the 24,000. That'll give us 8,000 in residual value. That wasn't too difficult, was it? Let's go to company B. Well, here, we have our sales, we have our operating income, but we're missing average operating assets. But if we look down here, we see that average operating assets equal operating income over ROI. So this equals operating income divided by ROI. Our average operating assets are $250,000. We don't have a percentage for our minimum required rate of return, but we, knew, we do know that the dollar value is 50000 So 50000 is what percentage of 250? Well, let's find out. We'll take the 50000 divided by the 250, and that would be our minimum required rate of return. So let me explain how I did that again. When we know what our average operating assets are, and we know what our minimum required rate of return is, we multiply the two together, that would give us 50,000, but we didn't know the 20%. So we would take the 50,000 divided by the 250 to give us the 20. We're just reversing the order. So what's left? Our residual income. Well, we know that it is our operating income minus the dollar value of the required rate of return. There we go. Let's move on to the next one. The next one, we don't have operating income. So operating income we see is ROI times average operating assets, but we don't have ROI. So we cannot solve an equation with, with two unknowns and only one known. That can't be done. So let's move down here and see if we can solve anything down here and then work our way back up. You have to be flexible, right? Well, look at the percentage here. The percentage minimum required rate of return is 12%. Our average operating assets are 150 so we can figure this one out, can't we? It's just 12% times the 150,000 of average operating assets will give us $18,000. We have a positive residual income. So to get a positive residual income, if we add the two, 
our operating income must have been the addition of the two together. Must have been 24,000. Because 24 minus 18 leaves us positive 6. Well, suddenly now we're ready to calculate ROI. What is ROI? Look over here. It's operating income divided by average operating assets. There's our operating income. There's our average operating assets. Return on investment is 16%. There we go. What this question does is it sees, it tests, or evaluates whether or not with given missing data, you can manipulate the original formula, ROI equals operating income over average operating assets, into the other two formulas by isolating each of the terms. And it's the same with residual income. Can you do the same with residual income? And if you can, if you can work your way from the top down and from the bottom up, you get the relationship between return on investment and residual income they're linked with the required minimum rate of return. There you go. Exercise 11.9. Return on investment relationships. Provide the missing data in the following table. Short and sweet, right? Well, here is the table that we have. And we see that we have margin turnover and ROI. So we're looking at ROI in terms of margin and turnover. So just as a refresher, let's keep our margin on the bottom, operating income over sales. Our turnover is sales over operating assets, and our ROI is operating income over average operating assets. ROI is also margin times turnover. So we have to supply the missing data. Here we see that our operating income is $72,000. Our ROI is 18%. So what we have here is 18% equals $72,000 over something. We don't know what that something is. That's what we have to figure out. So we can take our average operating income and we can divide it by our ROI and it'll give us $400,000 in average operating assets. And you can check to see if we get 18% by taking 72,000 divided by 400,000. It should give you the 18%. So now we need a margin figure and a turnover figure. Well, let's have a look at our margin. Our margin is operating income divided by sales. We have both those numbers directly, right? Equals operating income divided by sales. There we go. So our margin is 9%. Our margin times our turnover will equal ROI. Well, we can just eyeball this one. 9% multiplied by something equals 18%. We can just go directly and enter 2. We don't have to do anything complicated. That one was easy. Let's move on to the next one here. Next one, we hardly have anything to work with here, but we have margin and turnover. Notice our margin is 4%. Our turnover is 5. Well, ROI is margin times turnover. So our ROI is 20%. So that gives us something, right? Well, ROI, 20%, equals operating income, we don't know, over 130,000. Well, that's the same situation that we had before. We have 130,000 uh, on our denominator. We have 20% on our ROI. Can you see what to do? There we are, exactly. If something divided by 130 equals 20, that something must be the 130 times 20. And you can check by seeing if you divide 26,000 by 130,000, do you get 20%? If you do, that's your return on investment. But we're not done. We need sales. Well, we can approach sales two ways. We have sales over here in a denominator. So our margin is operating income over sales. We have margin and we have operating income. We can also approach it from the turnover perspective. Turnover, which is 5, equals sales over average operating assets, which is 130. So the easier way I find is whenever we have, whenever we're just looking for something in a numerator, we simply just cross multiply turnover times op average operating assets. We get 5 times our average operating assets. We'll get sales of 650,000. So to determine whether or not that makes sense, we can take our operating income of 26,000, 
We can divide it by our sales of 650,000. Let's just do that, see what we get. 26,000 divided by the 650,000 gives us 0 0.04. Is our margin 4%? Yes, it is. So we have ways to check to make sure we did it right. Finally, what do we have here? We have our operating income, our margin, and our ROI. So we need to figure out what our sales are, our average operating assets, and our turnover. Well, again, margin times turnover equals ROI. So 8 times something equals 20. It doesn't take much to see that's 2.5. Eight, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus half of 8 is 4 makes 20, right? So that's 2.5. So now we have a margin, and we have a turnover, and we have operating income. So now look over here. We have our margin. We have our operating income. So we have two. We're only missing sales. So operating income over some number equals 8%. Right? So how would we do that? Well, if it equals 8%, it would be 400,000 divided by the 0.08 we'd have sales of 5 million. Now to check to see if that makes sense, because you really want to check, this can be tricky sometimes when you're just, when, when you're uh, manipulating algebraically in your head, it can be a little tricky. So let's just find out. Let's take our operating income and let's just divide it by our sales and see what we get. We get 0 0.08. Is that what we should have gotten? 8%? Yes. So we know we did it right. There we go. All we're left with is average operating assets. We can approach that in two ways. We know ROI, and we know our operating income, so there's the one unknown. Also, we know our turnover, and we know our sales, so there's the one unknown. We can approach it from a turnover perspective or from an ROI perspective. It's whichever one that, uh, that, that, that you want to do. So let's just approach it from ROI. ROI is 20% must equal something, or sorry, must equal 400,000 over something. So 400,000 over something is 20%. So how would we get a number there? Well, we could take our 400,000 divided by the 20% and we get $2 million. Does that make sense? Well, let's just calculate turnover then. Turnover is sales divided by average operating assets and if it makes sense we should get 2.5 and we get 2.5 so we have ways to check this out multiple ways to solve these problems whenever we're looking for missing data it's a puzzle we just want to fit pieces to the puzzle there you go